Greetings once again. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Um, today's talk focuses on Elon Musk and his relationship problems. So I was really fascinated by, well, bonjour, vi gets me stays on Emma Osweibine and Strasbice. Ni hao ma. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Um, as you've seen with other presentations we've done, we tend to sort of get to an end game. But I was just fascinated by um, some of the relationship elements of how t uh, Tesla and Elon Musk tends to operate. So I deliberately brought up the conversation of relationships because, as you all know, Elon Musk is 47 years old. Uh, he's been married three times and divorced and has five kids. Uh, I believe by just his first wife. Um, what I was fascinated by is that, for example, with Elon, he's willing to identify a person or a company, make a commitment to that person, but he, part of his making that commitment is he loves to have exclusivity and he does not like to share. So I was kind of fascinated by taking a look at a step-by-step -step basis of other examples of how Elon's relationship process uh, is on display. The first example is his relationship with Panasonic. As we all know, um, Tesla is closely aligned with Panasonic uh, for growth, um, while uh, Elon is okay with Panasonic working with other battery manufacturers. He's um, uh, forged a relationship where Panasonic might be selling uh, uh, lithium ion for laptops and other devices, but no longer batteries relative to competitors. And then uh, Tesla's done an, a lot of research to improve that battery to operate, optimize it for uh, its use uh, in the 18650 battery. And then uh, now uh, he's building the Gigafactory with Panasonic and another factory. So. I would, based on his relationship process where he loves exclusivity, I would not be shocked if Tesla chose to buy Panasonic to limit uh, the fact that Panasonic still needs to grow and they have other customers on the battery side for laptops is the type of situation that he tends not to like. And so do not be shocked if he ends up buying Panasonic to close out Panasonic uh, servicing customers other than Tesla. Another example of his relationship process is what just happened with Gromann Engineering. So uh, Gromann is a German-based engineering company. Um, Tesla was using, had been using their automation process to manage the automation of their facilities in Fremont, California, and I would imagine elsewhere. Um, Tesla then chose to purchase Gromann Engineering, and uh, after purchasing them, they, um, they completed the deal, and then um, Tesla decided to cancel all contracts that Gromann Engineering had with uh, any, any other company other than Tesla, so, so because it's now a division of Tesla. So, uh, this created a stir because sort of the German automotive community is a very cooperative one. And in the case of Gromann Engineering, they had uh, BMW, um, Mercedes, and other customers that they were serving in terms of building out their manufacturing facility. And Tesla is elected to, through Elon Musk, elated, elected to cancel those contracts. And as a result, um, a few things spun out of that. One is now BMW and Mercedes and those guys have to find replacements for the type of work Roman was doing in terms of sort of leading edge automation, robotics, et cetera, onto the production line. Um, it also resulted in the uh, CEO or founder of Gromon Engineering um, deciding to either quit or, or get fired by Elon Musk because he was protesting the fact that um, 
these longstanding contracts that helped the business get going were being canceled. And um, he felt like it, you know, it was totally ridiculous for this to be done. And the employees were actually considered striking because um, when you have a company that only has one customer, i.e. Tesla, what if Tesla goes out of business? Now all of them end up losing their jobs and have a difficult finding, you know, perhaps finding where else to go afterwards. So I, in the case of Gromont Engineering, uh, Tesla really liked what they were doing in terms of the quality of their work within the factory. Um, this deal slash process of getting rid of Gromont Engineering's other customers seemed very strange to me because um, when you have a company that's do, that has many clients that it's servicing, um, you know, there can be benefits in terms of knowledge gain from that. And I, I kept wondering, you know, how does Tesla benefit from having the Gromont Engineering folks sort of build out one factory and then sit around waiting for opportunities to keep refining that factory on behalf of Tesla? If those engineers are working on multiple factories at the same time, um, yes, they can optimize tes Tesla's needs, um, but it just seems to me that that's a lot of talent that ends up sitting on the sidelines for extended periods once you build out that fa manufacturing lines because you're not making significant enough changes on a constant basis or building enough facilities, I think, to put all of that talent to use. Um, I, so um, I thought that this relationship was kind of interesting. Um, another aspect of uh, the fact that Elon does not like to share is high concentration of supply chain. Um, I was really stunned or fascinated by the fact that one of Tesla's biggest problems right now is that because they control the supply chain so thoroughly, it's good because competitors are having a hard time competing because they can't, they have to go out and replicate whole cloth uh, parts of what Tesla does. And so this is a hassle for competitors, but it's kind of a hassle for Tesla's customers because if your car gets in some kind of accident, uh, even down to the 12 volt battery, Tesla has unique uh, items across the entire vehicle. So as a result, we've seen as long as eight month long wait uh, for batteries and parts. And um, I think Airlines doing a good job here because it slows down the onslaught of competitors. But on the other hand, it's pain in the buns for owners because it's brutal trying to get um, uh, parts solutions at any time uh, an issue might pop up, be it an accident, or you have to replace those parts going forward. Um, those are a couple examples, I think, of what I call um, Elon Musk relationship challenges. Um, he loves commitment. He's willing to make a commitment, and he'll make that commitment long term. Um, I'm intrigued by his goal of limiting competition in terms of how fast they can come after you as well as um, sort of optimizing what your needs are versus other customers of the, uh, the organization that you're working with. Um, I can't say that there isn't precedent for this because I have heard of companies like Google literally acquiring companies um, in Silicon Valley and then immediately shutting them down, redistributing engineers with the with the goal being they've now eliminated a potential competitor, they've added quality people to their staff uh, that they can distribute into other work areas, um, and um, they get to incorporate the best of ideas that those engineers might have into current and future project products at Google. So I would say there's technology precedent <clears throat> for what he's doing, but typically this is not an automotive precedent because there aren't that many auto companies to deal with to begin with, and they do share talent that's hired and, and move between, but um, the full bore of how Silicon Valley operates is not, um, uh, is not typical. 
I uh, want to thank you for taking time out uh, to review Tesla Fan Insight. Once again, this is Greg. Please like and subscribe. Uh, look forward to our next conversation. Tschüss, macht's gut. Au revoir, à tout à l'heure. Goodbye.